What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Chaos. So welcome to a new episode of Take It to the Table. I am joined by none other than the regular guests of the show, Anthony and Clark Taylor. How you doing today, gentlemen? How you doing? Looking forward uh, to this. I'm doing good. I'm on a two-show streak with you, my friend, today, right? This is our yeah. second show of the day. It, it couldn't be any better. The RCs, the RCs. Yes, we got to keep it rolling. Um, yeah, so uh, we got a great show for you guys today. It's going to be very AEW-centric. I'll just let you know. So if you're not an AEW fan, you can just, you know, you've been here for 30 seconds. That counts as a view. That, all that, that's all that matters. So you can go, go along. But if not, stay, 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 um, stay for the show. We're going to be talking about, of course, AEW Collision and... Um, all the, uh, the the possible implications that that show may may hold, um, as well as uh, you know certain wrestlers that ain't getting TV time should they be on Collision, or is there a reason why they're not getting TV time? And also the um, the the possibility of a draft is it a good move? Is it a bad move? Should they just you know go between shows as they please? All that good stuff. So yeah, we have got a lot to talk about. So make sure you strap yourselves in. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. All that good stuff. And without further ado, let us take it to the table. All right, all right, all right. So um, as of this recording, um, less than 12 hours ago, uh, AEW Collision has been confirmed by Warner Brothers Discovery on their presentation shows. Um, I, yeah, my mind's gone blank. I haven't got the, the, the right name for it, but yeah, they they officially announced it. Gonna go. Um, it's gonna go live on July. Sorry, June seventeenth, which is a Saturday. Um, so yeah, it's one of the worst kept secrets. Um, in the wrestling industry, it's been it's been confirmed now. Uh, got the new logo out. Very WCW Nitro esque. Um, loving lo- loving the logo. Very loving the old school look. Um. And, uh, yeah, it's a two-hour show. Um, and, um, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting. They've put a poster with all the um, – they have FTR, MGF, Orange Cassidy, Powerhouse Hobbs, um, the House of Black on there as well. So looks like they got they already got an idea of who they want to be on that show. Um, but, yeah, just, just from the offset, let's just get things. Well, what's your thoughts on the, uh, the, um, the, the presentation of the um, – and how they announced it and – uh, what's your thoughts on the logo, and you know what, what do you what do you expect from this? So we'll go with you, Anthony. What, what's your thoughts on it? I think a Saturday night time slot at eight is kind of a bad, really bad spot for 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 them. Um, I, I get it's a prime time slot for them, but at the same point, Saturday is going to be rough. It, it's it's going to be rough. You're you're really going to have to stack those episodes to keep the ratings up. And other than Dynamite. They really haven't had much luck on on drawing ratings, and even Dynamites is not exactly lighting the world on fire either. It's kind of stagnant. Uh, as far as the logo, I mean, I I grew up during the the Attitude Era, so I, I, the the Nitro esque logo it, it was a nice touch. I wonder whether or not not it was a it's either a tribute to the old WCW, or it, it could be a cheeky dig. At uh, the the people that have complained that AEW is just trying to be WCW all over again, uh, which has been a, a constant complaint that they've gotten. I don't know if it was a dig. Maybe it's a dig at WWE because WWE owns the old Nitro logo. I don't mm. know, but it, it, I, I would like to see. It, think it would be more tribute, but who knows? Mm. I definitely go ahead. definitely hear where you're coming from there, but I got to strongly disagree with one thing on the time slot. Mm-hmm. By comparison to Rampage's time slot, you're talking about 11 p.m. across the United States. Mm-hmm. That is such a difficult Friday night time slot because 18 to 35, which AEW always talks about, mm-hmm. that's who goes out at 11 p.m. on Friday, whether you're on the East Coast, in the Midwest, or on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. A- a- and on the West Coast, it's played taped. So it's too easy to record. It's too easy to do that. Eight Aren't o'clock on Saturday on the West Coast is going to be five. Uh-huh. Eight o'clock on Saturday is a different animal for those age groups. Aren't Eight they going out to the Saturday? Saturday? Goes out, if you go out on a Friday, unless you're going back to back, that's that's 18 to 21, right? That's 19 to 25 that goes out two in a row. 
I don't know a heck of a lot of 21 to 29 to 35 year olds that are hitting both nights. You know, a lot to go out on Friday after work, easy to change into something to go out in. Then Saturday, you kind of sit around and you watch sports. You do your thing that way. Cure to hangover. Thought wise, yeah, I think eight o'clock Saturday is so much bigger, not just because of the second hour, but so much of a bigger deal than than eleven p.m. on a Friday. If it's eleven p.m. on a Saturday, I'm with you on on that, especially right. Like that's not sustainable. No one's up eleven to one on Saturday, even if you are recovering from the hangover, like chaos, right? Like you said, they're chaos. Um, even if you are, you're not staying up to 11 to watch two hours, but at eight, you might, you might. And especially if they broadcast it live on TNT or whichever network it's on, I believe it's they broadcast it live. Now we're talking seven central. There's a lot of people in the central time zone that want to watch it at seven, five Pacific. That's an easy time slot to fill too. TV dinner and, and a little bit of wrestling. It's moving to Saturday from Friday night. I think is is massively advantageous. Oh, it uh, is. I, I just I think they're going to have a hard time. I just think they're going to have a hard time getting the ratings. I don't know what day though would be better than. Oh, Saturday. I don't think there is. I just think they need they need to make it appealing to to people to tune in because at that point you're going two hours on Wednesday an hour on Friday because as far as we know they're not canceling Rampage right Mm -hmm. and then you're doing another two hours the very next day Uh, I I feel like um, um, I said it on the daily earlier that um, obviously Dynamite is obviously the the, the main show or they're probably going to do this thing where um, they try to do like what WWE has with Raw and SmackDown. You got these two primetime shows, and then Rampage will be the new Dark, if anything. You know, with them because obviously Dark is pretty much dead. So, um, so yeah, Rampage will have like you know, yeah, a couple, you know, a couple decent matches, but you're gonna also put your overcomers, your you know, that'll be a feeder system. I'm not a feeder system, but like almost like a developmental in that kind of way. Because yeah, that that time slot is awful. You clearly because because of that time slot as well that made. Tony Khan not really care much for that show with, um, um, as he used to, so yeah, you might as well just just put like um, just have the the odd decent match to hit down here and there for the mid carders, and then obviously make them face developmental people at the same time. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's gonna. I think it's a great time slot. Obviously, it doesn't make much sense to me because I will usually watch it the, the day right. after. Because um, uh, yeah, around that time, I think it's gonna be one one o'clock over in the UK. So yeah, that, that time slot doesn't make much difference to me. But um, yeah, I think I think in terms of ratings, it, I, they will definitely. I don't think they have a good time provided they actually put a decent roster in there, um, especially if this is meant to be for punk basically you know and he was he, he, he was a ratings draw um he, he, he was uh he was a good ratings guy there so um i don't think they would have that much of a problem uh i do agree with what you said clock in terms of yeah like if they care about the which they do care about the, the demographics more most they're most likely going to be out on friday and then cure their hangover and and you know just chill on the saturday evening kind of thing um and then um and then take it from there um but uh yeah, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know what else to say really. Um, I think, I think it'll be, it'll be a good time. Now, let, let me, um, let me, let me give, 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 give this, uh, give this to you guys. Um, in terms of, um, if if they, there's obviously talk about them doing actually a brand split or like a, like a, uh, yeah, pretty much a brand split in order to accommodate one certain person. If anything, maybe two, because obviously Thunder Rosa is also does have it does tend to rub certain people on um, <laughs> the wrong way backstage and obviously with, with CM Punk. Um, uh, my question to you guys, is it still, would it still be a wise move to do uh, a hard, sp- a hard brand split? Because there has been talks about that, but the, um, the champions will be exempt. So they're, they're going to be floating in between shows. Um, would you be fine with them having two distinctive uh, rosters or would you rather it be open across the board? 
Um, let's go with you, Clark. I, I have no problem with two distinct brand splits. Like, I, I think that'd be awesome. I think it also would be a bit of the ultimate fuck you. We're on take it. I can say that. It'd be the ultimate fuck you if yeah. they just did a real, real cut and dry draft <laughs> and split the brands. It'd be like the ultimate flip you the bird, classic Stone Cold Steve Austin. How do you like me now? Um, it would just that would be comedy to me in and of itself. And I would I would kind of actually like to see it. I don't have an issue with the brand split Com- competition within the company is it isn't a problem as long as everybody's level-headed about it mm-hmm. now that's where we run into trouble is like you mentioned you got punk rosa i'd go as far as even miro and uh andrade right there's I mean, malachi black was one foot in one foot out like what eight yeah. months ago you know um and that's no knock on them as performers that's it's your job and you you have to you know get that stuff settled but if we're going to do the hard brand split it needs to be definite on this side because it'll be judged stronger than wwe's drafts have ever been judged Mm. if they do do that if they do do a hard brand split and we see crossover and we see stuff that we've seen on the wwe side it's going to be a lot of finger pointing look look what they said look what they did they did it too Mm. oh you're going to complain about I mean, that's just the way I feel like the wrestling fan base is a little bit right now with the competitiveness. Yeah. Uh, uh, what You know what I mean? There's some people that watch everything. There's quite a few people that have picked a side. Ironically, it's funny. I, I actually think it's beneficial for the business. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's even more beneficial to be in the middle. It, 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 you know what I mean? Looking at it because then you can kind of assess the whole field. Yeah, I, I think this one, if they do do a firm brand split, it's got to be that clean. It's got to be NFL draft-like. It's got to be absolute. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, ooh. Is he uh-uh. back? Yeah, yeah, he's back. He's back. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree um, uh, with, with that statement. So, um I'll be very interested to see. Well, I'll save that question short um, uh, in a minute. But yeah, what about you, Anthony? What do you do? You think a brand split would be beneficial, um, or do you have any reservations? What's your thoughts on it? I mean, that's one of the problems that AEW has. They have so much talent and so little time to, to have TV time for these people. So I, I think it's I think it's a good move. Uh, my only concern would be, and it's the same problem WWE tends to have when they do these brand splits, is trying to even them out so that they're fair. But I don't even know if that's so much the case with AEW because, as it's been said, you know, some of the people on that poster are people that have either had asked publicly have asked for the release or allegedly have had issues with with people on the roster. So it was essentially going, okay, these are all the problem children that won't work with well with <laughs> others. So now they're on collision, and then here's everybody else. I, I'd be afraid of where that's going and what the stigma is going to be, especially with the poster. It's like, okay, this one had a problem. This one asked for a release. Mm. This one complaining. Like I, that would be my concern of how that plays out. Even FTR is on it. And we know FTR or at least one of the two has rubbed people the wrong <laughs> way by their tweets and, you know, their, their podcast at one time. So, I mean, I think it's a right move. It's just like anything in wrestling, you need to have good booking with it. Uh, as long as you got stories and you got a direction to go with these people, it shouldn't matter what show you're on. It should be quality entertainment. But the problem is that doesn't always deliver. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's that's a good take on there. Now, my question, my question to you guys is also: um, if they do te- if they do end up doing a hard brand split, which it all it's all pointing towards that day, they will. And I think mm-hmm. I agree; it does make sense. You know, it's um, <laughs> I, I love how the way you put it, you know, everyone collision is the, all the problem children and then dynamite is like, yeah, here, here are the goody, good, yeah, the goody, good shoes. Yeah. So if they do tend to do a brand split, which they, all signs are pointed that they will, um, how would you want them to actually do it? Do you want them to just, to just, um, do it through an Instagram post or do you want them to do like go the bells and whistles, like the WWE draft? 
Um, what? But obviously, you kind of run the risk of people trying to say they're comp- they're imitating what WWE are doing. But I mean, if they were to do a, a draft, how would you want them to go about it? If you have any, if you have any thoughts on that, well, um, let's start with the U Clark. I- I'm gonna go. If we're gonna do a draft, so this is hypothetical. If we were to, right? Throw Don Callis on one side, maybe Taz on the other, and let him draft. And and do it throughout the show, litter it throughout Dynamite and Collision for a couple weeks, but but make it definite. Like you can't see the other. Honestly, they can tell stories in that space. Like this rivalry can't happen because you were drafted to separate shows. Mm. There's room for stories to be told there. If you're gonna do it, get a GM on both sides. Have them do the draft live on AEW Dynamite. Start it there. First few rounds, and you get the big picks. If you're going to split a faction, split a faction. I understand where you're coming from on the copycat WWE thing, but WWE didn't invent the draft, right? Yeah, NFL, of course. No, I get that. The NFL <laughs> draft and the NBA draft have been you know, must-see TV for 25 years. It was the first ever wrestling draft. This first is- ever <laughs> wrestling draft, for sure. But, yeah. but 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 as much crap as that'll take, you know what I mean? It's like a little bit like me talking crap about Cody Rhodes. Like <laughs> I'm, I, there's people that like Cody so much, it's going to bug them. If I if I <laughs> say what I said the other day, but it's too bad if it's good storytelling, it's good storytelling and it'll come through at the end <laughs> because that's what the fans want to see is yeah. quality stories being told and a brand split isn't an issue. If it's told properly, it's only an issue if we're blurring lines and it's convoluted and mm-hmm. it's telegraphed. Mm-hmm. As long as it's done properly, a straight draft by AEW, they can teach a lesson almost in creativity as long as the execution is good. That's the problem, though, is would I bet on that? Probably not. But that's, that would be more what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Than anything else, right? Fair dues, fair dues. What about you, Anthony? What would you? How would you want them to present it? I, it's funny because, like, like you, Clark said, you know, there really is not. There's not GMs and Tony. Although he appears on camera occasionally, he really doesn't appear like Vince would or Hunter like would. As the, as the, as the, as, you know. So the thought I had when Clark mentioned about Taz and Don Callis, uh, to me. I play this up because they're talking. We all know that like punk in theory is supposed to be the face of collision, Mm -hmm. right? He's got issues with the locker room. Have them have Tony say, I picked two representatives of the roster to draft both shows and have punk be one of them and have either a member of the elite or Jericho be the other one. They could take shots at one another. They could do all that crap. What does that do? It creates interest in watching the program. Oh, could you believe what Punk just said? Could you believe what Jericho just said? I think that's a smart play. And if, in theory, if Punk and Jericho ever wanted to put their issues aside and wrestle a match or Punk and Omega, whoever the representative is, you could do something. You could do a brand versus brand thing like WWE's what does with Survivor Series and do it whether you do it at Forbidden Door if you do away with the New Japan aspect and it's just collision against dynamite whatever or a separate event or whatever you want to do you build that up have punk be the representative of collision like it, why not we all, we all assume this is what, where it is it's you know this is where everyone that doesn't get along with the roster in some capacity goes here and everyone else goes there. And, you know, I, that, I, no. but it has to be a hard split. It can't be a situation where you draft somebody to collision and they're and they're going to appear on Dynamite. Because I know there was a rumor or something. Like, oh, well, if Punk's on Dynamite, then the, the elite won't appear on Dynamite. Like, yeah. no, like it has to be a split, like a real one. WWE screws it up every time. Or they yeah. just ignore the rule. Yeah. Uh, I'm completely fine with a champion floating. I've yeah. always been a fan of, like, to me, I know there's the whole argument, world champion and WWE. 
I, when there's two world champions, there isn't. It's mm -hmm. two, it's two brand champions and not the whole company. I prefer one personally. Yeah. So I'm fine with that if they wanted to do that. Yeah. Um. I'm. I'm. I agree. I'm. I'm fine with the um with the floater um of champions. I mean, yeah. Don't have to be. Don't have to stick to one. Now, in terms of your um in in, in response to your thing about Punk being representative and Jericho being a representative, mm -hmm. wouldn't that wouldn't that uh follow the argument of you know the inmates running the asylum? You know, why why would you have two wrestlers who just should be just wrestling? Just choose who they want to be on on I mean, on this network TV show. I mean, the only well, the problem is because they don't have a GM. They really have no authority figures, and it would be Tony picking himself. I mean, th in theory, if Tony wants to be on TV and announce it, he can. They yeah. could even play it up if they wanted to, which is WWE's briefly spoofed this, even though it wasn't accurate. Doesn't matter. You can, <laughs> since one's on TBS and one's on TNT have a quote unquote representative from each network drafting them. I mean, you could do any number of things with it. I just said, since they have nobody else have Tony randomly selected two representatives to pick the matches and pick the, um, you know, the rosters for the shows. Just a thought. Yeah. 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 They could do it that way. That's, that's fair enough. That's I thought fair. you made a awesome point though, about the power to the people thing. Right. And if you do the Jericho to punk thing, right. Mm -hmm. I believe performers should have more creative liberty, especially if they're dang good mm -hmm. in pro wrestling across the board, whether it's WWE or AEW, I don't care what company it is. Right. I think period. Mm -hmm. uh, you should listen to performers because guess what? They're the ones putting their bodies on the line. So uh, creatively speaking, uh, that that's where you're going to get the most obvious feedback, right? <laughs> Both directions, coaching and listening to performers as a whole. The idea of two wrestlers running the locker room on two shows, that's scary. It is. <laughs> it well, no, I'm not, that's, I'm not, right? I'm that's not like, saying I know that's not that. exactly what either of no. you were suggesting, but yeah. the, you know what I mean? Like the idea of this is punk show, this is Jericho's show, that's scary. That's not probably how it should work. We should, yeah. you know, have things checked out along the way <laughs> um right at, at least at some point there should be some sort of bounce back as far as like creative creatively creatively it's it's almost impossible it, at, as a single person not to bounce it off someone else even if you're the most creative whether it's artist writer whatever it is that you do in a creative space it's almost impossible not to bounce your ideas off someone else that that that's just how the kind of the world works, and to have two active stars in control of shows that's too much, but mm -hmm. to have them the face of the brands, yeah, you're face, telling me yeah. that, that's, what I, that's what I mean, and it's that's... right, it's CM Punk as the face of one brand, it's Jericho yeah. as the face of the other. Now we're talking a bit, right? Now we're on the right track there, mm -hmm. at, at least, at least. We need a buffer, though. And we can say what we will about Tony Khan, but he he's actually been that buffer, I think, of late. That's why we don't see Miro on TV. That's why we don't see certain people on TV uh, of late. Because Tony put his foot down and said, nope, 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 not this, no more drama, and had to book around it. And that's difficult. We talk all the time about how much is on his plate. But... Now you're in a position with four hours plus one as opposed to two hours plus one. That's what he was looking at just a few weeks ago. Four hours plus one and two hours plus one with the roster he's built if executed properly. It's going to be as good a wrestling as we've seen in ages. It just is. I just that, think that's, that's too much for one person to book. Uh, because he also has yeah. Ring of Honor, he also has the pay per views. I hear it's you. It, it's, it's Vince was booking five hours a week. V plus... Vince wasn't doing it himself. I, I mean, I don't. He think did have Tony's, a crew. He did have a team. He, he <laughs> had a team, but I don't think Tony's doing it himself. I I don't think he's the only one 
making creative. Not, not anymore. Too. Like obviously, he's got he's given because he does have his agents. You know, I think I'm pretty sure like Aaron Anderson and and yeah, all, all the some of the legends. Uh, I think at one point he had Ricky Steamboat there, with, and so, so he does have some people like Mark Henry agents doing it. Um, but uh, but yeah, Vince c- compared to Vince, Vince had more had more of a bigger team like than than to- even Tony Khan has right now, in my opinion. So obviously, when Vince when he was in his prime. You know, he had Michael Hayes, he had Jr., he had um, Pritchard, um, Cornette, Cornette, Patterson. At one time, it was but also at the same time. By the way, I would say, I would say that Vince had a bigger. uh, His voice was louder in all those rooms than Tony's ever been. Navigating that with creative teams and, and especially with a startup, is such a different avenue. This is probably stuff that Vince navigated when we weren't watching. Mm-hmm. When he first bought the company, these mm-hmm. are waters that that Vince navigated, figuring out who he can trust, who he doesn't, putting his fingers on every single match he possibly can. Mm-hmm. Right at that time, I don't know. I feel like Tony kind of gets the unfair shake on this because it, it's not possible that he's literally the only one. There's other people with yeah. input backstage. There's other people with creative input and creative ideas. And I, I yeah, would no. imagine also there's creative ideas that are executed on Tony Khan's behest based on them being presented to him, not the other way around. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I Tony Khan isn't a, uh, he's not a writer. He's not scripting. Right. I, I, I just don't, mm-hmm. I, I have a hard time believing that, that Tony on- Khan is scripting three hours of television. Plus all of that. I, I have a hard time believing that. Clark, now booking, the- doing all of that, looking at the looking at the matchups and and everything from their rivalries. Yeah, he, he's involved in all of them, but it doesn't necessarily mean he's booking them. They were all his idea. They were all his original thought. I, I don't think that's possibly well, how it works. J- just based on one scene on All Access, Tony's talking to uh, Sammy Guevara. And he's got this big long sheet of paper and he's like, this is how it's all mapped out for the next six months. Like he had sh- stuff all mapped out. So I don't know map, yeah. whether or not he's, bu- I, nobody knows who's booking the stuff other than him. Like we're, we're, we, we publicly don't know whether or not he has an actual creative team or just random people giving their thoughts. All I'm saying is he can't be doing it all himself. That's too much yeah. for one person to do. A hundred percent. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I do firmly, I do think he was, it was him all by the beginning, but then obviously when he yeah. became less available to, to, uh, to talent, the, the bigger the, the roster got, the, the bigger the roster got, and especially after, especially after Brawl out, I think that's when he started expanding a bit more, um, in terms of having a more, I mean, like, say- more options for people to, to, you know, speak to um it it and the more options for talent to to speak to in, in case you know for creative differences and whatnot so don't you think even before that though chaos like cody had a massive stroke on creative yes when he was there that's we what i say yeah that, right he did i mean and, at one point and so this is what i'm saying this is what's interesting to me is so like cody rhodes for example like we just we all admitted like yeah he absolutely had massive stroke creatively like he went away, like we don't think he was replaced. Like yeah. that story was never told backstage business wise, though. Like that'd be so ignorant for lack of a better term to not figure out how to fill that void on the way out. Now, maybe it's not public from a business perspective, it's but there's uh. if Cody had that much stroke, there's no way that it's now all of a sudden all on he just took over his responsibilities. Mm. And I also wonder if that little power struggle on the I've got an office, I've got all of this say led to what we see with the exodus. Because at, at one point, Cody Rhodes had his fingerprints all over every episode of Dynamite. Yeah. And, and that wasn't all Tony Khan. It wasn't. No. A, a lot of the show was booked by Cody Rhodes. You, you could tell um, the diff- you could tell the difference between the Cody stuff and the the elite stuff. Like the the Cody stuff was more traditional wrestling, dusty style booking. Except and you could tell the stuff that was go go. You had mm. a go go, which wasn't traditional. You had the weigh in. I mean, 
Well, no, I, listen, that was, I'm not saying that was good stuff, but I'm yeah. saying as far as trying to put over a young talent, which he did, I mean, he did try to do with the TNT title. I mean, he brought in a, a ton of people, oh, yeah. including Eddie Kingston. Kingston, for sure. So Darby, he put Darby over. He did yeah. put Darby over. For, and Clyde Gordon Rivera and all them people, yeah. yeah. So, Even I mean, Brody Lee. Yes. So, I mean, you know, just from that perspective, I mean, I don't know who's running it. No, we're not going to know because it's a, not a publicly traded company anyway. So it's it, unless Tony comes out and says it, people probably give their little inputs. And just like Vince, you know, final stays with Tony, which I understand. It's his company. He's putting out the money. So it makes sense. Yeah. 100%. 100%. 100%. <clears throat> um, so moving on, um, moving on from that now. Uh, obviously, Collision is on Saturday. You have Dynamite on Wednesday, and obviously, Rampage on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, for you know, for 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 a while now, everyone keeps on saying like, "Oh, the roster's too bloated," all this kind of stuff. All right, now you got this third show, two hours. There's way more time for for everybody that haven't been getting TV time to make themselves heard or seen. If you will, on um, on on collision, but there's that argument now that you know, do these people actually? There do all of them actually deserve TV time? Because and there's a lot of people that's on Dynamite that are getting TV time that shouldn't be getting TV time. So how 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 do you think they're going to be able to to balance it? Because obviously this is clear. They made this second show clearly because of. You know, people that have been, you know, problem children or, you know, be frustrated with creative. Um, so they've given this this platform. But are the people that are complaining, should they actually be given this spotlight? Like, what, what like, how do you think, you know, how, how do you think they're going to be able to to justify their time of being here? So, like, obviously, let me, the people that's off the top of my head, obviously, Miro, um, Pac has obviously gone gone missing lately. Marina Shafir. <laughs> so there's a different types of quality and stuff. Like Nyla Rose. how do you think how do you think they're going to be like how, how do you think they're gonna, you know, uh justify this show um uh in terms of quality with these kind of people? Like uh, do you think they're gonna be able to do that, or you just think they're gonna just go to just go to throw everyone that haven't been used on onto the show? Like do you think they could actually be able to to, to do that? Um, let's go with you, Clark. I hope I made myself sense there. I, I, no, I, 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 no, 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 no. It makes perfect sense. And that's what I'm sketched out about is I hope they don't put all of those people that were like, wait, where have they been on this show? Right? Like Miro is world class mm-hmm. and, and he can function on any wrestling show given the right opportunity. Right. Um, Maria Shapir, Shafir wouldn't exactly say the same, but as a <laughs> talent, right. I mean, she's violent she's there's no reason not to believe in marina shafir at least for right now now has her work been good so far absolutely not not (laughs) but that's not the point it i just hope they don't put all of those talents on one show and all of the others on another Uh, a nice divide a nice even split Mm. that's the key to the whole operation we need main eventers on both shows yeah. In both men's and women's divisions. We need mid carters and we need tag wrestling. And we need more importantly than that, continuity. Storytelling yeah. on both shows. That is the number one thing we need. Is just really good stories we can invest in. Cause we'll make the time if the story's right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We'll all make the time to watch. If the story's that good, yeah. That, that's I mean, the, my... the case in point was obviously when the bloodline stuff was at its peak. Like you know, yeah. that, we everyone made sure that they, they were they were just tuning in the following week. To yeah, see what I'm not happening. gonna miss that, right? Yeah, it's, definitely, it's... definitely. Uh, what about you, Anthony? What's your thoughts on that? Do you think they'll be able to do it? Or do you think they're gonna just shove everyone that haven't been used on, on, the, on the collision? <laughs> well, that's the thing. I, I think that's the fear that it's gonna just be the problem children on collision, and then you know everyone else on the the elite people on on dynamite. I, you you definitely have to split it and make the rosters appear at least fair. 
Like it cannot appear like, oh, Dynamite's a superior roster. Like you're going to have you're going to have some heavy hitters more on one than the other. It, it, it's it's just going to happen. I mean, Dynamite's the flagship show, so you're you're probably going to see some of that. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the other thing is, I want the shows to feel different. Like, I if you're legitimately going to split these rosters, like I think the show should feel different different camera angles, different look of the show. I mean, that's one of the criticisms WWE gets is there really is no visual major difference between Raw and SmackDown. It's just one's in red and one's in blue. Like there's no, the camera angles are the same. It's the same, it's just the same everything. Like it yeah. needs to feel different. Uh, like Clark said, and I, I said earlier, the, the creative's got to be there. You got whatever tools you have on those shows, you need to be using them. If you're not using them and you don't have a direction, don't keep them employed. Like it, 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 there's no point in continuing to pay for somebody if you're not going to use them. Uh, you know, the, the running thing, like I've said multiple times, Nyla Rose, they bring her out every six months, have a little feud with her. Then she goes back to catering or wherever she goes. And <laughs> yeah. You, you got to figure out what you want to do with these people. And there's another third factor that I don't think any of us are really considering what does this mean for Ring of Honor? Because really, they don't have an exactly distinct roster themselves. So it is, it, are the people that don't get drafted to one of these two shows end up there? Like, mm. is there a third level to this draft? I mean, I think that that's another question. Like, they're treat quote unquote, they're separate companies, but they're really not at the same time. So it, it'll yeah. be interesting to see what they do with this. Um, I mean, ideally, Ring of Honor is pretty much the developmental brand for AEW, which is fine, but you need to have a direction with this. Samoa Joe really should not be working Ring of Honor and AEW. Like at some point, you need to cut the cord and Ring of Honor kind of needs to stand on its own. And Samoa Joe ends up one of these two shows that's on the main show. I see Clark violently shaking his head there. I take it. I was going to say, I'm like, I hear where you're coming from, but I will say this. I don't think ROH deserves to be the developmental brand. I think we talked about velocity and heat earlier about rampage and mm -hmm. all of that ring of honor can stand on its own two legs. And as a business, if ring of honor can function as ring of honor, then they can compete with impact. They can compete with all of the organizations on the same financial level oh except for more because they're owned by aew and tony khan yeah but they have no distinct roster that's the point yeah they, yeah. they really have no distinct roster except, I'm completely... except except they've got the lucha bros in place. yeah who are aew like yeah but, yeah, but AEW that, that, that's, that's the the how we view AEW them currently though there. right but not... remember by the way brand split pre-brand split we view the WCW guys as WCW guys. It's a little different, but if you go all the way back, right? It took a long time to view them as members of the WWE roster. Okay. It, it, it's the same with ROH, except a little different. ROH can function almost independently, but not as a not as a developmental brand, as a high quality wrestling brand for workers who don't get involved in the five hours of television time that are now available to go work and tell stories because guess what? We all just went to the Galen center. So they're doing well enough to fill that place. They're doing well enough to fill buildings. And if you can keep telling stories, keep the ROH brand intact. Now it's not. Now this is what NXT black and gold was for a time. Yeah, this they is your buildings third too, brand. Clark. They this were is, still a development. That's my point. This is your third brand. No, no, no. That didn't feel like a developmental, like UE and but, everything. But, but realistically, that didn't quite it feel was. like a developmental. No, no, no. They, I know it didn't feel like it, but that's what that. it was. The Black and Gold was the most must watch show. Yes. Weekly. Mm -hmm. Until Dynamite came along. And then they moved nights. Ironically, roster wise, less talented than what they have at AEW right this second. If you split that roster and go five hours a week and you bring us two hours of ROH taped a week, 
who's providing more to watch, more content than AEW? If this is executed properly, business perspective wise, who is providing us with more high quality wrestling? If they give us a couple hours of ROH a week, a couple hours of dynamite, a couple hours of collision, and then rampage as your bonus money. If you're still awake on Friday, two things, Clark. One, Ring of Honor, you have to pay extra for because it's on a streaming service. And Gotta two, make money. They still, they still do not have a distinct roster. That's the yeah, point. They don't have a dedicated There's nobody roster. exclusive to Ring of Honor other Except than essential nobodies yeah. <laughs> in, in the business. Like they're, they're and like people that know that they don't care about. Like Brian Cage is on there, but like is he quote unquote a Ring of Honor guy? No one's ever d- distinguished. Whether or not he's exclusive to Ring of Honor or not, I can only you think of two people. I can tell me, you don't people. pop massive though if Cage shows up in WWE. No, I don't. <laughs> no, really. Really. Simply not because Cage. of how he's been portrayed. Really, like you know, obviously it'd be interesting. Obviously, an AEW guy is good, but I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't be like, oh my god, it's Brian Cage. I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. But um, but yeah, like in terms of the distinct roster for ROH, like I said, the only two people that comes to mind that. I know that has been predominantly on ROH for the for the for the for the last few months was Eddie Kingston and maybe Athena. Oh no, Mercedes Martinez. Mm-hmm. Mercedes, yeah, those yeah, but, are the but she's technically the well, she was the women's champion gave yeah. it to her, Athena, but yeah. Yeah. So like with over the ROH, like they can it could definitely start on this two, on this two feet, hundred and ten percent. But yeah, like it's, I agree with what Anthony said. It needs to have a distinct um a, its own set of roster because right now they're definitely cross-branding and like i said you got the lucha bros but they are they are aew people you got them as your roh champions it doesn't really make sense and same thing with some I, and i'm not saying that ring of honor can't stand on its own but it needs to stand on its own with its own roster that's, yeah yeah that's all i'm saying yeah yeah, hundred percent. I, I don't see. see. I think that's such a big undertaking, though, would be to build an original roster for ROH that isn't AEW signed talent. They're under you, the same banner. You, it'd be you, like it'd be like trying to build NXT from scratch. No, Clark. What all I'm saying is, if you're if you want to keep AEW talent on there, like Samoa Joe, then draft them to Ring of Honor and keep them on Ring of Honor. They can't be jumping from show to show. That's what I mean. I'm not saying, oh, just do all original right. people and try to redo Ring of Honor from 20 yeah, years yeah. ago. I'm right. saying that it needs to be a distinct roster like Dynamite's going to have and like Collision's going to have. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I, I'm actually in agreement with you on that 100%. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. No, yeah, no, we're on the same page there. No, I, yeah, they, they need their own roster, but I do think it's such a valuable asset to have Ring of Honor, I mean, dude, like they didn't run an AEW show in LA. They ran a Ring of Honor show. Mm-hmm. That thing was. And to packed. be fair, it would sell good because obviously that's also an international crowd. So right. it was going to do. WrestleMania yeah, weekend, yeah. Yeah, it was WrestleMania. So the international crowd definitely helped um, for, for that. And it was um, a stacked car, too. And it was a stacked car. They made, they made it, they made them, them your money's worth 110%. 110%. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 totally understandable. Um, so, uh, uh, who would you? All right, let me just give you. Who would be your top five people that you would want to see on both Dynamite and Collision? Like, who would you want? Like, you know, they, and they can't cross brand. They have to stay. They have to stick on there. Either. Like, what what would you think would be the most ideal five people you would like to have on both shows? So, uh, we'll go with you, Anthony, if you can think of the top of your head. Okay. Um, assuming that they're, they want to keep them separate because they have their own issues. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I would think the elite hangman and uh, now I, we're not counting champions or do you want me to count champions? Yeah. Okay. So the elite uh, probably Brit and it, whether or not you count hangman or not. Uh, I mean, I don't know. If, yeah, Hangman or Adam Cole, depending upon how you, you you fall that, I would say they would probably be on Dynamite, and I do think it's probably going to be Thunder, Punk. Punk's going to be the face of, of the, the Saturday one. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think of who else would be, be you know, other problem children. Miro would probably be on there. Dan, Dan Housen's friends with everybody. He's like the Switzerland of wrestling. He doesn't have heat with anybody. <laughs> um, 
I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm trying to think of it. I mean, you, you could put House of Black on there. I, I think I would like to see people that get opportunities with this split. That That's what I want to see. Like yeah. if you're going to do it, I don't want it to just be, oh, okay, these are all the quote unquote problem children on Saturday night. Like I want it to be a real wrestling show. I don't want to just be, well, these are the ones that are friendly with one another and willing to work together. I, that's mm. what I don't want. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, this uh, I would say. Um, to what about you? Let me uh, I've got another thing in my head. But yeah, what about you, Clark? What would you um? Uh, what would you want to see? What would be your top I, five? I, I we've talked so often about the tag team division in AEW. How do yeah. we not make one of these two shows the house of the best tag team wrestling? Let FTR just be the face of the show, whether it's Collision or Dynamite, whichever one. They're supposed and, to float out the champions. Carry the belts. Yeah. Let them be the face of the show. Make it about tag team wrestling. Put a lot of tag team wrestling on Saturday nights. I think it would be beautiful. You have such a stacked division. It, it It's one of those things where I, I am all for pick not a world champion. Unless it's Jade Cargill. Jade, Jade would be the only other. Whether it's the tag champs or it's Jade, one I would like to be the face of Collision. The one that defends almost every week. You see him in action almost every week. You're guaranteed a quality match almost every week. If Jade can deliver that, or if it's FDR or whoever it is carrying the tag belts, that's the move Saturday night. Give us big time wrestling on Saturday night. Give us a match to look forward to. Tag team titles on the line in the main event on Collision every week. Okay. TBS title on the line on Collision every week. Here's the question, though. I know the champion is supposed to be floating, and I know they're owned by the same people. But shouldn't the TNT champion be exclusive to TNT and the TBS champion be exclusive to TBS? I was thinking as well. (laughs) I'm just saying... You know, uh, since they're uh, not in "quote unquote" TV titles, even though they I've kind of t- are, I've totally heard that, um, and totally get it. I would point to the fact that we have three world titles in the WWE right now, uh, <laughs> not two. Listen, not I, two. I, we have three. I prefer one. I've already three. told you this, so that you're not three of them. Um, <laughs> I would say Technically, they're counting that two as one, one but yeah. with the dancing yeah. between shows, and given also. Roster wise, yes, with flights and everything and travel. If they can work both shows as champions, that makes sense. But as a champ, sometimes it's the performer that makes the title, and sometimes it's the title that makes the performer. Mm-hmm. But also, it's supposed to be if both. you can link it to the show, then that's sweet of you. The no, the, re- realistically, the, no, it, 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 you're so no, you're right. To. No, you're for sure right. Um, but anyway, the net of it is, uh, I think if you can link one of the major titles to the, to the new show, especially that it's, 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 it's a no brainer. It'll do good numbers. It doesn't have to compete against sports outside of the fall season with college football in that time slot. If we're going to go back to that issue, um, by comparison to the Friday night slot. And if you can put a major champion, whether it be a Jade Cargill or a tag team champions, heck, the trios, if if that's the deal, mm. guarantee it. Saturday night, that's the end of my Saturday. I'm going to go watch the big title match that mm. I want to see. That's easy selling right there. That's easy, easy sales. I want to see the big title match on Saturday night every okay. week. And if they can keep building that every week, then we're talking. Um, final question on regarding this AEW um, centric episode. Um, uh, we haven't really mentioned or even thought about how this could actually impact pay per views because obviously, if this is going to be a hard split, a hard brand split to separate, you know, certain people working with each other and all that kind of stuff. When it does come to, if they are doing, obviously, if they if they making the show actually matter, it, most storylines culminate at a pay per view. 
how are they actually going to house all these people to, you know, unless they're actually going to start doing two pay-per-views a month or whatever, or, or make, they'll do it, do monthly pay-per-views. Um, and then <clears throat> one show has one pay-per-view one month. The other one, the, the other one has this, the, the, uh, has the other pay-per-view the following month. Uh, do you, do, like, do you think they could actually do that? Do you think they're going to increase the amount of pay-per-views they, they're doing or, you think they're actually going to try and house all these people under one roof when it comes to the big, the big blow off on the pay per view? Do you, do you think they could actually do that? Um, let's go with uh, Anthony. I think it depends whether or not they that. I know it's been long rumored the Max deal. Like if they, if they made a deal with HBO Max to do essentially their version of Pe- what WWE does with Peacock, mm-hmm. then yeah, I think they could probably do monthly. I just don't. I don't think they'd be able to be successful at the current price for the pay-per-view to do monthly. I think they, I think they might have a hard time with, with the way the economy is. Like, I don't know if they can get 50 bucks a month uh, mm-hmm. from people every month. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, th- I think it's possible they could easily do if they are doing their quarterly pay-per-views, that maybe like five major stories from each show makes it on there. So it's a total match card of like, I don't know, eight or 10 matches, depending upon what you want to do. I think you could do that. Um, I think that it, it with the Saturday show, it eliminates any possibility, I think, of a Saturday AEW pay-per-view again. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, they were doing that at one point. Yeah. So I think they're all going to be Sunday at that point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you know, I, I think that's the direction it would go. I mean, the only other thing that they could do is would they – have like collision leading into a pay-per-view on a Saturday. I don't know. Maybe that's a possibility if they wanted. That's too much. <laughs> that, takes, that, that takes the place of their buy-in. Yeah. I actually Maybe. think it's genius though, because you can't accomplish ratings on the buy-in anymore. It, it's not that that doesn't exist. So mm-hmm. it, if you look at the way the UFC leads into their pay-per-views, it's on ESPN free TV. ESPN prelims. 2, it starts on ESPN 2, the pre-prelims. Then yeah. the prelims start on ESPN. Then they go straight into the pay-per-view. Mm. And it's like, if you watch those prelims, buy it, right? From that perspective, especially for casual fans, it's kind of a no-brainer. I actually think, Anthony, and I I think you did it unintentionally because that wasn't the point you were making about the about leading into it. I actually think that's the move. Now mm. you have... Now you have a story to be told to convince somebody for two hours to buy the pay-per-view. So if you move that time slow back and you tell that story and it's on television, it's like, hey, I may get AW, I might not, but I'm going to tune into Collision, then boom, that's where they hook you. And Zero Hour goes away on YouTube where Mm -hmm. they don't make any money, right? Realistically, not any, but like not the same yeah. level of right for Saturday night pay-per-views the wait a minute I got to see this main event we've yeah. built for it for these two hours now I'm in right now I'm hooked there's now two, I gotta buy it there's two things that I thought of with, with that you know you remember Clark yeah it used to be Sunday night heat it was the build into whatever the, the, the thing you do and if you remember the original the original zero in. hour the original all in they had a lead in on wgn america remember there was they made a big deal about the fact that they signed a tv deal or or, you know for whatever the special was which was essentially what will become the buy-in they might even call it the buy-in if if i'm remembering correctly Mm -hmm. but yeah they could totally do that i don't i mean a two-hour buy-in i don't know but then i they can mix it up. We'll end up watching it anyway. What's the difference? Yeah, yeah. They could definitely mix it up. Like, as long as it's not like how when it comes to the, one of the big four uh, for pay-per-views with um, WWE, you do they have a two-hour pre-show with no wrestling whatsoever. It's just repeats of the promos or packages. Um, I think if they actually sprinkle it in, which, yeah, Tony Khan will probably definitely do that for sure. Um, you know, mixing a couple uh, pr- um, uh, pre- pre- pre-show pre matches and then, yeah, just mixing the promos in between. Um, I actually, yeah, now thinking about it, since you just you, you um you detailed it, I think yeah, I'll be I'll be up for that too. Cause I really don't want them to get rid of the Saturday pay per views, um, especially with people it's being stupid. It's like, how is are they are they actually going to try and compete with Saturdays um with WWE's PLEs? Uh, it's it's like, well, 
the TV ratings and pay-per-view ratings, like they're, they're two different entities. Like I don't think they're trying to compete. The pay-per-view will always win <laughs> if um if if AEW was trying to go toe to toe with Collision with um any pay-per-view that they do on Saturday. And it's, it's every odd Saturday. It's not every Saturday they do a pay-per-view. So um. Yeah, um, I, I'll be, as long as they don't get rid of those completely. Um, but then again, it's been a while since they had a Saturday pay per view, haven't they? I know it's, it's it's disappointing, honestly, because I prefer yeah. the Saturday ones. Much only because prefer Saturday, same. I, I prefer the Saturday the because it's funny because you know people have work or they have school yeah. the next day. It's like if the pay per view and you know AEW is notorious; their pay per views run typically run long past midnight a lot of times. Uh, I mean, WWE has done it too. I'm not saying it's just an AEW thing, but yeah, you know, you're doing it on a Saturday. Like you get together with, like I haven't done it, but you know, they also stream them at movie theaters. Like, mm-hmm. that, you know, I, I've never done that, but I'm more inclined to do it on a Saturday than I am a Sunday night. Yeah, exactly. 110%. Um, well, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's some, that's some very good points. We'll see what happens. Obviously it's still early days. Um, all I know is I'm looking forward to uh, June 17th, AEW Collision, and also whatever additional huge announcement. Because um, as of, this is today's Wednesday, and Tony Khan still has to make a huge announcement. He's he's promised it, so something else is going to be announced tonight. So we'll see what happens. Um, is uh, is he going to announce the, the return of CM Punk and one? Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. Um, so yeah, uh, just before we wrap up, um, I know this has been AEW centric. Um, I just felt, I think it's just fair to just sprinkle a little in um, of WWE because it's only fair. Um, Night of Ta- Night of Champions is coming up, uh, and one of the big matches that I'm actually looking forward to um, is uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. Um, Quite surprising, you know, the fact that, you know, Reigns ain't defending this championship. He's rather looking to try and add another title to his Infinity Gauntlet. Um, and uh, and also more surprising that, you know, this is the first time that Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are going to be in Saudi Arabia. Um, obviously, due to, you know, political reasons, they were able to, well, for Sami Zayn, it was, it was because due to political reasons and Kevin Owens just, didn't want to go um but yeah it looks like it's definitely happening um uh before i give my theory or my predictions of what this match will what will happen at this match uh what was your thoughts when this was announced and are you looking forward to that looking forward to this match uh well boy i'm just with you with clark so for me by the way kevin owens that's just a good friend that's a yeah. good friend and that's so cool by the way that he's never gone. And then the Sammy and Kevin and Saudi thing is interesting. It's it's intriguing, to say the least. The match itself, that's the most exciting part. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, with the Uso storyline and everything going, I've seen four belts Roman in my own mind. And I don't know how he carries all four, but it would be hilarious. <laughs> if that's what plays but out. Kenny Omega can do it with... I've Five? seen it. Yeah, uh, it was a lot of belts for Kenny. Yeah. But if Roman's got f- all of them, there's so many, so many belts. Can we get him uh, the U.S. title too off theory? That's not the point. <laughs> Sorry about for later. But um, just, yeah, it, the four belt Roman is fun. At the end of the day, I do think Sammy, his steam was so steamy headed into WrestleMania. <laughs> It was hot. He was on fire. Keep the belts on Sammy and Kevin. It's still there. It's still there. And figure out a way to do that uh, within the bloodline storyline. That that's my prediction. At least is is I think Sammy wins with a halufa kick on good old Solo, Solo, Solo Sokoa. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, what about you, Anthony? What what what's your thoughts on this match? And what's waiting about come will be. I mean, that's one of the things, the, the Kevin Owens loyalty to Sammy. I mean, they're, they've been together. They're, they're like brothers. That's a lot of money Ke- Kevin Owens has turned down over yes. the years. To, to yeah. wor- I mean, that's there's no questioning loyalty like that, where it's like, no, dude, you're, you can't go. I'm not going to go. I don't care what they offer. Uh, so mm. I, I respect Kevin a lot for that. Um, you know, the visual, I, if... If 
Roman and Solo won. I almost think as far as carrying the belts, I would <laughs> – if they did it, I want Heyman to have assistance to carry the belt because <laughs> I would I would like them have him to have like interns, <laughs> and it would almost be like an ultimate insult if he had the Usos carry the belt for them. Oh wow, yeah, I would like that. Is there is that a bigger fu than yeah. to, than to do that? But I mean, realistically though, I, I I'm with Clark. I, I think you got to keep it on KO and Sammy. I, I'm curious to see whether or not they eventually split these belts. I think that's another question. But assuming KO and Sammy win, Solo's taking the loss. There's no way Roman's taking it. See, that's that's what that's what I was gonna. Uh, this this was my theory. Um, I mean, this could be. I th- I met me personally. I think this would be the perfect time to to actually show some type of weakness in the bloodline as in letting Sammy hit the Yaluva kick and pin Roman Reigns in this one. Um, because it just, just imagine this, like obviously, yeah. So Sammy pins, pins Roman. And obviously solo is obviously looking to Roman as in, you know, you're meant to be this old star 99 overall guy. If you obviously get him pinned and obviously you're obviously th- trying to put the blame on the Usos for failing at Mania and trying to embarrass them, but you just took a loss. Like you ain't nothing special. If you and you know why should I be sided with you? And you're making them feel feel like shit, but like you can't even win the the tag team titles. Like so that could be obviously starting the starting to bubble between you know the the, the, the tension brewing between Roman and Solo, and then. That would be obviously a further implosion within the bloodline, and that's when obviously the Usos tend to fuck off, and then you know that kind of thing. So that's what I, I can. That's what I, I I would be down for that if this could be, and this is the first time that Reigns has lost, but obviously in tag team match, he hasn't lost in the singles action since 2019, if I recall. So okay. it could take that loss. Go on. I think it was 19. Okay, because yeah. I love chaos. That idea, and now that you said that. What if Solo goes to drop the spike on Sammy or Kevin and hits Roman on accident and Roman's the one that takes the pin? That's how they do it. Solo, right? Remember, he couldn't pull the trigger on Jay, but, oh, he's pulling the trigger, and then all of a sudden, whoops, he hits Roman, collateral damage on the side, and then all of a sudden, Sammy and Kevin retain. Roman takes his first one, two, three, Matt. Yeah, Roman would have to be right behind Sammy because yeah, yeah, he usually holds him in place to do it, doesn't he? So he has yep. to dodge it and then but just he dodges it and then yeah. somehow he just clicks Roman with it. And then yeah. it's Bedlam, obviously, but that's what costs the win. And then Roman goes to blame Solo, and it Solo finally speaks up and does the wait a minute, I'm the only one. That's had your back the whole way. Mm. I th- I'm the only right. Remember, yeah. Right hand Jay, not mm-hmm. so much. Jimmy mm-hmm. was unsure. I'm the only one. It was an accident, and you're gonna talk to me like that. Yeah. You Call know me. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's what, your thoughts, Anthony? What they could do, and this is a playback because they used to do this with Yokozuna again along the slow and bloodline. Mm-hmm. What if they do a thing like they did with Mister Fuji? Where he get he, he Heyman throws something misses hits Solo Solo's blinded and swings wildly and that and then he hits Roman. See that? Yeah, I could I could believe that. That's yeah, yeah. I like that too. I yeah. like that a lot. Yeah, but I like. I, the I, idea. I just feel like it'll be a, it'll be bigger if Roman Reigns actually took the fall. It, it, there's nothing wrong with him taking a fall in a tag team match. But that would just show that, yeah, definitely the the bloodline is weakening, yeah. rather than Solo taking the loss. You know, he's already taken a major one when Cody beat him. I don't think he needs to take take this one. Um, See, that's where I think even t- to your point, because I think you're spot on. Solo needs to provide the loss mm-hmm. on accident, whether it's yeah. a spike or something else. He needs to f up, for lack of a better fuck up, right? Yeah, like yeah. he needs to he needs to have a bit of a fuck up. Yeah. And whether it be spike him or hit him with something, it that is, I think, the way we tell this story. 
because at the end of the day, Roman Reigns should probably win this match by himself the way he's been booked for two or three. Years. Yeah, he could easily win. By himself. Himself. Like, yeah, yeah, he should just win. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, and there's, so there's got to be shenanigans to say the least. Uh, or do know, you think the Usos might come into play? I think they will. I, I think the Usos will come into play, but I don't know if that's... I, I would hope that wouldn't be the definitive finish unless mm. that's the direction they're going to go where Roman and Solo are facing the Usos and that's the direction they're going to go. Maybe. I don't know, but... It depends on when they want to implode this. Yeah. Because, I mean, we all thought it was going to implode at Mania, and obviously that didn't happen, so I don't know how much longer this goes at this yeah. point. I mean, an Uso double super kick on Roman that was intended for someone else would also be funny. If that if that's the move, exactly. The, mm-hmm. the running. I, I think we we could all agree that this is all going to end up due to a fuck up with, within the yeah. within the family. So, so somebody gonna... has to duck <laughs> and not get hit with something. That's I think that's what this all comes down to. Somebody I think that's the safe duck. bet. Yeah, somebody's got a safe bet. Somebody's got a duck. And then it's gonna be a shot to the face, right? Yeah, fair news, fair news. That's just pure logic. Um, okay, fair enough. Uh, and just uh, just to wrap it up, finally, uh, see, uh, obviously, um, um, there's been a rumor about the possible lineup for Money in the Bank, which is gonna happen after Night of Champions. Um, so yeah, there's the rumor lineup for for the men's. I'll just quickly, quickly grab it. Um, give um read it out to you guys. Uh, Damian Priest, L.A. Knight, Bobby Lashley, Matt Riddle, Cody Rhodes, Gunther, Finn Balor, Chad Gable, and Edge. Uh, what do you think of that lineup, and who do you think is most likely going to win out of that? I'll read it again. Damian yeah, Priest. Read it again. Damian Priest, L.A. Knight, Bobby Lashley, Matt Riddle, Cody Rhodes, Gunther, Finn Balor, Chad Gable and Edge. That's eight people. Shit. That is I will I could safely guess it will not be Riddle. <laughs> I will say it yeah. won't be Lashley. I'm rooting I don't for, think it's Gable. I'm rooting for LA Knight and Gunther. I hope Gable puts on a heck of a show. He will. Uh, G- Gable's gonna be the new Shelton Benjamin when it comes to these ladder matches. Yes. Always in them, never wins them. Um, I mean, what Bobby? I mean, th- Lashley. This pla- I'll th- take this- Lashley. Clark, we're doing pl- picks. I'll take Lashley. Clark, this plays into your whole WrestleMania 40 thing. What if Cody wins the damn thing and and, and declares for Roman right then and there for Mania for 40? I don't think. And, and then they have a full year to build. They have all that time to build it up. See, I think that's worse. You don't because- want him to win the Rumble again. Yeah, but no. no. I'm, I told you my idea on elimination. I know you had the whole thing with Solo. That's, that's, I've, that's, I've written the story. <laughs> I, I, I'm I willing to sell it to story WWE. With Solo, but it does. That's a Solo Cody feud. That's not a Cody Roman feud. <laughs> no, it is. It is both. It really isn't. <laughs> Every time Cody gets close, we're gonna get him towards the top of the card. So like I Rock feel- screwed him here, but. We need every time Cody gets close, now. it's so low on his it's so low on his ass. Yeah, I feel like obviously it's it's I think it's it's gonna be um Cody winning this and then he's gonna go and challenge Reigns at, at SummerSlam. He has to lose it at one of the big four. I, I, I really don't think and I hope Reigns don't hold it till WrestleMania 40. I mean, I know it's not one of the it's not the biggest obviously SummerSlam is not one of the biggest shows, but it is the big four. SummerSlam is can be just as big. Um, uh, obviously, the best time was that mania. Everyone can agree on that. But yeah, if if not there, then SummerSlam is the next next big bet. I think yeah, he's not going to just run in and cash in. I think he's going to call his shot, like he said, at SummerSlam and then face him and then probably take it there. Um, as much as I would rather LA Knight, LA Knight definitely would be my, my second choice. If Rose wasn't in this, I would say LA Knight, hundred and ten percent, hundred. I'm with you on LA Knight. There uh, for sure, by the way. <laughs> uh, Gunther, I don't think he needs to win the money in the bank. He can, you know, once he relinquishes the IC title, 110% go for the champion, the, the big the big title, whoever it, it may be. Um, 
especially if he's on Raw, so he can't even go for the for Roman Reigns. It has to be for the the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, and uh, oh, he's going again. <laughs> no, sorry, technical difficulty. You were rolling. I know, I know. You're on fire. Ooh, 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 ooh. There we go. I don't know what happened. <laughs> must be doing work in the area. I never have this problem. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, I say um, yeah, definitely uh, uh, Rhodes for 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 the win. What um, who, who gave the prediction? Was it Anthony? Clark. I said Clark, Lashley already Clark, early. <laughs> Lashley. I, I, I think Cody's a safe bet on that on that one. That's probably where I would go. I, La Knight. I'd like this. I mean, I'd like to see La Knight, but it just at the same point, I'm like, okay. He he's not taking the title for Roman, so yeah. at that point, yeah, I don't know. I, I think Cody's the safe bet out of out of that list. I, I there's no way they're giving it to Riddle. No, <laughs> um, you probably just have a lot of like a big bong in the flipping suit in briefcase anyway. Um, but uh, <laughs> why is the briefcase nice smoking? Stash it during yeah. traveling. Hey, that is actually sick. A smoke. Why didn't they do that with RVD? Huh? Why didn't they do that with RVD when he had the briefcase? I know that is actually sick. I like that. I would love to see you come around with a smoking briefcase. That would be sick. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> it's like, why, why is it smoking? You Just know, why. billowing smoke. Wait, wait a minute. And then this is what they should do if they gave it to Riddle and the briefcase is smoking, when he goes to cash it in, there's, there's no contract, it burned up. <laughs> yeah, no. Smoked I, it. <laughs> he caught on fire. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's all burnt. <laughs> now the internet would be furious with that. Oh yeah, but I'm just okay. saying. <laughs> I would lose my mind laughing though if they did that. We, we, oh, we, we would, but you know how. Oh shit! Did. I burnt the paperwork. <laughs> I rolled it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my bad. I rolled the paperwork and burn it. Fuck. <laughs> Is that all you did, Riddle? Yes, that's all I did. Yes. I rolled it. That's all I did. I didn't do anything with it. I didn't put anything inside it. I didn't take two puffs. I didn't puff, puff, pass. It's so good. That's why I just rolled it. Um, fair enough. Cool. Well, yeah, that, like that's all. Based, that's all rumor right now. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, Money in the Bank is at the O2 Arena. Can't wait. And also, Roman Reigns has been confirmed for Money in the Bank as well. Mm-hmm. So. Yes, I will be able to acknowledge my tribal chief once again at the O2. So I can't wait. You know, Those yeah, I'm definitely up. wearing my We the Ones shirt. Hundred percent. Those ones up. Get them ones up, Just baby. It's like Disneyland. Yes, yes, yes. Keep those ones up. <laughs> so um, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of the show. Um, as always, thank you very much, Clark. Thank you very much, Anthony, for being on this show. Um, it's always been a pleasure. And uh, yeah. As always, make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Good stuff. Make sure you follow at Wrestling Republic and official yeah. underscore T I T T T for all the latest updates, reviews, thoughts, rants about Cody Rhodes, um, and all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> until then, don't worry about I'm... the negative comments, Clark. Don't worry no, about no, no. it. I am be... <laughs> like hell, he is. This <laughs> guy love me. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I have been your host, Chaos. He has been Clark Taylor. Down below has been Anthony. Until next time, guys. Peace.